Hi everyone, Brandon here with gdntbasics.com on the video question line. Today's topic is virtual condition, MMC or RFS. Uh, the question for today is, does virtual condition apply when there is no MMC modifier? This question came to us from uh, Charles. So uh, virtual condition does not apply uh, without the MMC modifier or the LMC modifier. Um, but we do have what are called boundaries. So let's take a look at this. Uh, we'll look at the definition first of virtual condition and what they state in the standard. And then we're, we're gonna look at the difference between uh, virtual conditions and inner and outer boundaries. Okay, so we pulled this statement here from the standard. Um, and this is a, uh, it's an animated slide from our course, but I've made it static uh, for the purpose of this. Uh, but out of the standard, it states, when a part is controlled with MMC, you create a boundary based on your geometric and size tolerances. Um, you now have what is called a virtual condition. So down here on the bottom, or over to the left here, uh, we're going to look at this. We have this, uh, this little uh, uh, size and feature control frame pulled from this drawing that's used in the, in the course. And we have size of 10 millimeters plus or minus 0 0.2. And we have a perpendicularity call out. Um, we're controlling a cylinder here, it is a boss. So the diameter symbol here is present. So we have that on there. Uh, the tolerance is 0 0.2, uh, and that is at maximum material condition. And this is in reference to data may. Um, so now I've, I've kind of dissected this, but um, the bottom of the part here uh, is data may, that surface is the datum feature. And then we have this post sticking up. I have three different ones shown here. And uh, the reason that I've done this is um, to show you on this first one, um, this is the largest diameter pin here. So that's at maximum material condition. Um, these little blue lines that I have on here, these are representing the diameter. So I, I'm not showing them three dimensional, but that's what they, um, if you were to kind of imagine these are cylinders here. Um, so on the top one, the diameter of this is going to be 0 0.2 um, because our size over here uh, is going to be 10.2. So that's where we've come in on this one. So it's stated there at 10.2, we get 0 0.2 of perpendicularity here. Um, you could easily uh, change this over here to position. So this, this would work just the same, that'd be okay. Uh, but on this example, they have perpendicularity, so we're going to go with that. Um, so now on this one, we have a, a maximum material condition. So this, this is our MMC over here, 10.2 on the diameter. And uh, the perpendicularity of 0 0.2. So that's what we get at that condition. But now as we depart, we're going to get bonus tolerance. So I have included all three on here. Um, and by that, what I mean is um, coming in at 10 millimeters. Uh, where we're departing, so a diameter here, we're coming in here, what we call the nominal. Um, so we come in at nominal, we've departed from 10.2 down to 10. Um, we've departed by 0.2, so we get to add the 0.2 right into the stated 0.2. Um, so now we have uh, a tolerance of 0 0.4. This is a diameter also. Um, 0 0.4, and then of course when we come down here and we come in all the way at LMC, which is 9.8, with that diameter symbol there. Um, now we have a, a full um, perpendicularity tolerance of 0 0.6. Okay, so 0 0.6 on that one. So um, we've taken this total tolerance here uh, of 0.4, we've departed all the way to LMC here, and we've, we've gained this 0 uh, 0.6 of perpendicularity error. Now, the reason that I put all of these on here um, is to show you that on these, um, we get bonus tolerance because the MMC modifier is applied. But um, we're, we're talking about virtual condition here. And it shows right here, this is an external feature. Um, so virtual condition down here says for an external part, um, we're going to take the maximum material size plus the geometric tolerance. 
So the geometric tolerance at MMC is 0.2. So uh, our MMC size, like we said earlier, is 10.2. So we're going to add in 0.2. We get a virtual condition of 10.4. Now that is static. So that doesn't change ever. So through these three different scenarios where we've gone from um, the MMC here all the way down to LMC, and this one, I'll just put an N on there, that was nominal. Um, even though we've changed in size, and notice how we're tilting more all the way down here at LMC, but the pin has gotten smaller. Uh, we start off on our calculation with this diameter here, which is VC, which as it says over here to the left is 10.4. Well, that size isn't gonna change. And I can't draw this perfect on here, but the virtual condition for all of these is going to be a diameter of 10.4. Um, that's never going to change. So uh, we use this as engineers. We're going to use this uh, virtual condition um, to design our mating component. And that's why we use this virtual condition. And we use it for uh, functional gauges, uh, stuff like that. There will be more uh, video question line answers um, in the future coming up that are going to talk about functional gauges and, and stuff like that. But for now, we're just going to focus on, on, uh, on this question. So let's move to the next slide. And um, I want to show you real quick. Um, on the left-hand side, I've, I have shown, and let me, let me take this and divide this up. On the left-hand side, we have virtual condition at maximum material con uh, condition here. So with the MMC modifier. So for an internal feature, um, for an internal feature, we have virtual condition equals the inner boundary, which is equal to maximum material condition, which in this case it's internal a whole, so it's going to be the smallest size. Uh, and we subtract the geometric tolerance. So that's for the uh, internal feature at maximum material condition. Now over here on the right, um, look at this one compared to this one. So what I have over here on the right is the boundary at RFS. So if we're talking about a hole, um, the inner boundary is always the smallest boundary size. So they have on here at RFS or regardless of feature size, uh, we have uh, the inner boundary, which is equal to the smallest feature size minus the geometric tolerance. Um, so smallest feature size. The difference here compared to here is on virtual condition, it says MMC minus geotol for an inner part. But on inner boundary, it just says smallest feature size minus geotol. But they come up with the same number. Uh, and that's that's the important thing um, to know about these two is it's going to come up with the same uh, number there. Um, if you are dealing with an internal feature and it's at RFS, it's going to be the smallest feature size minus geotol. If MMC is applied um, and, and we're on an internal feature, um, then it's going to be virtual condition, but it's going to be smallest size or MMC um, because it is a whole minus geotol. So they look identical, right? Um, they are the same thing. Um, there's a lot of argument out there uh, about this, but uh, the term virtual condition came up. Um, it does apply when, when MMC or LMC modifiers are present in the feature control frame. Um, if it's not, it goes over to RFS. Um, now we're just dealing with boundaries. Uh, but look down here for an external feature. Uh, so this one, external feature, again, we're, um, this is at uh, the maximum material uh, condition, but on an external feature. So down here it states virtual condition equals outer boundary. So that term outer boundary, right, it's over here. So outer boundary equals maximum material condition or the largest size because it is an external feature um, plus the geotol. So now that we're on an external feature, we're gonna add in the geometric tolerance. So whether it's uh, uh, for perpendicularity, angularity, uh, position tolerance, uh, wherever we can use this uh, MMC modifier, uh, we're going to take the largest size for an external feature and add it in. And that's going to give us, um, when we have the MMC or LMC, that's going to give us our virtual condition. Uh, when it's at RFS, it's going to give us our outer boundary. 
Okay, so let's take a, a quick look at this next one because I want to show you virtual condition at uh, LMC. So again, on, I've split this in half, uh, but now on the left-hand side, I have virtual condition uh, with the LMC modifier, least material condition modifier. And I flip-flopped these in the previous slide. I had internal on top and external on bottom for uh, virtual condition at MMC. But on this side, I flipped it, but on the right-hand side, I've kept RFS uh, the same. I did not change those. And I just did it for the purpose of showing you how they relate uh, over to RFS. So over here on an external feature, we have a virtual condition is equal to the inner boundary, um, which is equal to the least material condition or the smallest size minus the geotall. Okay, now over here on, on virtual condition, we're just talking about the external feature. So look at this and then come over and let's look at this one over here. Um, the model looks identical. Um, and it states here at RFS, you know, inner boundaries, smallest feature size. So comparing to virtual condition over there, it says smallest size, but least material condition because it's external. Uh, but on the right hand side, it's just smallest feature size minus geotall. Uh, looks the same, right? And, and, and really it is. The argument that a lot of people have with this in, in interpreting the standard is that um, the term virtual condition um, they think that it applies to at RFS too, and really it's just a grammar thing here, but um, they say virtual condition applies here also because that is virtual. Um, remember that LMC and, um, and RFS can't be functionally gauged, and we teach that in our courses. Uh, we, uh, we have that both, we talk about it in the fundamentals, we talk about it in the advanced, uh, but we talk about that in both of them, how this cannot be gauged. Um, either side of this, you can look at these and just tell that they can't be gauged. Um, as far as uh, RFS is not supposed to be gauged because um, it is regardless of feature size, not functionally gauged, I should say. Uh, it can be gauged, but you're going to have uh, stuff moving. But anytime it's on the, um, uh, the inner boundary for an external, it's going to look just like this one over here. It's inside the material. We can't gauge that. Coming down here, um, and this is, remember, virtual condition for least material condition. Uh, the material, the uh, virtual condition is inside the material here again, um, so it's just like this. Now, this one over here looks just like uh, virtual condition at MMC for an external. This one looks like virtual condition for, uh, at MMC for an internal. Um, if, it, if it does have the MMC modifier, remember that's a rule, then we can functionally gauge it, but if that's not present, if, it's, uh, if we have LMC or MMC, we cannot. And that's because of these situations here where we have that, uh, uh, we have those boundaries that are inside of material and we can't actually get to those. Okay, so I wanna show you the, um, the last one here. I wanted to bring this back up real quick. Um, it was that previous slide that I showed you there. But let's say on here we come in and we take, uh, we take this off, this material modifier. We don't have MMC anymore, so now this is at RFS. Um, that would mean that this view would go away, and this view would go away, right? Because the size over here of um, that we had originally, it was that diameter of 0 0.2, is static. It's regardless of feature size. It's never going to change. But based off of what we were looking at, if we were if we wanted to look at the OB or the outer boundary for this. Um, the outer boundary is going to be the largest size. So, and, and that is in theory the, the maximum material condition, but we don't have that modifier present. <clears throat> Excuse me, but it's going to be the largest size, which is going to be the 10.2 and add in the geometric tolerance. So the outer boundary for this would be 10.4. And then for the inner boundary, we would take the smallest size, Remember, in, in virtual condition, it was the uh, LMC. Uh, we're going to take the smallest size, which this can go all the way down to 9.8, and then we're going to subtract out the geotall. So uh, our inner boundary on this is going to be a diameter of 9.6. So it, it, 
there's confusion in here on that, that they look like they're exactly the same thing. It really comes down to definitions. And then the fact that whenever we get to MMC, virtual condition, uh, we're going to use all of those values for our functional gauges. And like I said, we're going to have a um, we're going to have a video question line uh, coming up in the future where we talk about that. So stay tuned for that. Um, so uh, to go back then and answer the original question again to uh, make sure that I uh, have fully answered that, um, we're not using virtual condition when it's at RFS, but we are calculating inner boundaries and outer boundaries. And uh, we have the formulas for those. They look like the, they're the same thing, but they kind of intermingle. Uh, whereas, you know, for the inner boundaries, we're going to be pulling uh, values from both uh, LMC and MMC, uh, virtual condition, they look identical, uh, and then the same for the outer boundaries. So uh, that really is the difference between the two. It, it really comes down to grammar as far as when we're doing calculations, but then the uses of it later on in GDNT um, really change. Okay, thanks guys for attending, uh, watching this. I appreciate it. Um, keep an eye out for all of our future video question lines that we're going to be posting. Um, and you guys have a good day. Thank you.